Today I'm going to teach you how to set up the focus distance of a camera in After Effects. So in this short video we will add a 3D camera, work with the camera tools, how to set the focus distance for different photos, how to set the aperture for depth of field, and how to combine everything to create an animation and simulate a real-life camera use for subjects to be focus and out of focus. Working inside After Effects, I have brought in three Photoshop documents and a clouds photo. So I'm going to bring those in, in the timeline, like so. And just to give you a bit of a background, these photos were taken in Paris from a fountain, and all I did with a pen tool, I masked out the distracting elements, like so, okay? And then all I did was to save them at Photoshop, and then brought them into After Effects. Now, since we will be adding a 3D camera, position each of these elements on 3D space and set the depth of field and focus distance, then all the layers on the timeline will need to be 3D layers, like so. Okay. All right. Next up, since they are too big in size, let's go ahead and size them down. So press S to scale and bring those down. And and I don't have a specific size here. It's gonna eyeball things. Okay. All right, so what's next? Uh, let's go ahead and add a camera. There we go. Type, you wanna go for two node camera. Preset, I can start with 35, but you can go even less. And you want to also have the enable depth of field. Now, at the event that you forget to have this on, you can also check that on a bit later. So click OK. And let's go ahead and place those into 3D space. So in order to get a help from After Effects, in the Select View layout, click on the drop-down menu and select Two Views Horizontal. For me, that works pretty well. So um i have the on the left i have the top view and here i have on the right i have the active camera so the first element is the clouds so i'm going to hover over till i find the z-axis then we're going to click and drag this to the z, uh, z space to the depth this is the depth i'll do the same one on the second here so we've got the first one. Uh, let me undo this. I think it's the third one is the lady. All right. I will keep the two layout views, the top and the active camera view, to be able to see how to move things around. Now, the key thing is to keep the distance between those elements and not to move them on the Z, just on the X and the Y axis. So I'm going to start with uh, this one here, uh, number three, I believe. I'm going to bring it down. Okay, and I'm very careful not to move the Z axis here. Okay, now we have the number one statue on the fountain. Move it on the Z, on the Y here. I need to cover this gap, and that's this one. Okay, maybe a little bit on the left here, something like that. There we go. I think I like what I see, and I also like the distance between those three elements, okay? And that's how we're going to accomplish the depth of field. Next is um, animating the camera. So let's make sure the camera is activated here. And I think I can go with one view. So I'm going to open up its properties here, transform properties, and I'm going to um, click on the stopwatch for the point of interest and the position to create two keyframes. 
And then I'm going to go all the way at the end and do the same to add another two keyframes. So at the very beginning, just make sure you're here, you have those two selected. We're going to use the camera tools. Now your camera is right here on the top. And it starts with a unified camera tool, then it goes to the orbit, track X and Y and track Z. And you do this by using the letter C, okay, to jump to the next camera tool. And that's what I will be using throughout setting up camera movements and alternate between camera tools. All right, so I'm gonna focus on this uh, statue here, the lady statue. So I'm going to use the Z and then the X and Y. I mostly use those to be honest with you. Yeah, let's say something like that. So it's going to start here, right? And then at the end, well, where is it going to go? Well, it's going to actually focus on this statue. So I'm going to oops, undo this, uh, press the C, zoom in here, frame it better. Okay, something like that. Let's uh, see how this is going to work. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to close this up and we're going to continue with actually um, setting keyframes for the focus distance and so on. Next up, we set the focal point and the focal distance which will sit right on top of each of these layers. In addition, we will also set the aperture, which is the size of the lens opening. It will affect the depth of field, so increasing the aperture will increase the depth of field blur outside the focal plane. So let's go ahead and open up the camera options. I'm going to go back to the very beginning here and I'm going to keyframe the focal distance and the aperture. Okay, so also we need to have the two views horizontal because from here we'll be able to set the focal distance and this is the focal distance right now. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on this keyframe here and I'm going to bring this down. This is the very first element. Okay, so it sits right here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. But at the same time, we need to also increase the aperture. So the rest of the elements are blurred. There we go. So as we move on, maybe on this section here, the focal distance will change and it will go to the very almost last, the, the second, the statue over here. Another keyframe there for both. Okay, click on the uh, focus distance, bring this up. There we go. And we can increase the aperture again. So this guy looks uh, really out of focus. Let's play this. So the lady statue is in focus. All right, it moves in, a room moves in, and this becomes out of focus. And then at the very end, this statue will be in focus. Again, we're going to create two keyframes on the focus distance and the aperture. Let's go ahead and bring this to, I think it's this one. And with one right there. Okay. Do you need so much aperture? Maybe yes, maybe no. I think it's too much. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So let's kind of play the whole thing again. 
Mm, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two keyframes and then paste them. I'm going to copy them, Control C or Command C, and right here I'm going to paste them. The only reason is because I'm going to go back to those two keyframes and I'm going to make this actually out of focus on purpose. So the camera is out of focus, it moves in, becomes focus. Just like a little trick, nothing else. It moves in. Oh, go ahead. Then the background becomes in focus, and then the last statue is in focus. Okay. All right. So I'm going to close it up, and then on the next one, actually, we're going to work on the background, the clouds. For this last step, I'm going to animate the clouds photo from the opposite direction. So let's go and uh, actually lock everything just because I don't want to move everything by mistake. I can go to the one view, that will be okay, I believe. And then make sure that I'm at the very beginning of my timeline. Press the letter P on your keyboard for the position. Keyframe the position, okay? And let's say the clouds on the X begin here and at the very end keep putting the clouds on the other side the other direction there we go let's see this and there is motion in the background that makes it even better as a motion so it's not very static Press the spacebar on your keyboard or zero on your keypad for RAM preview. And here is the final camera movement with statues getting into focus and out of focus. So basically, we keyframed the focus distance for each photo. We adjusted the aperture, created a simple 3D camera animation. And with all these steps, we simulated a real-life camera use with depth of field. This concludes this short tutorial, and thank you for watching.